Okay, I've been at this for a couple of days, solid, my whole weekend, and I'm definitely pretty tired right now. I'm going to stop and get something to eat. I will come back tomorrow and, uh, and keep trying to build these layers here, build these layers back of understanding. Um, right now, I'm just going to use this video here real quick to show you through all of these symbols that we've looked at in these various series that I've been doing not all of them but just a few as of lately I'll show you how this is all absolutely relative and um, just really going to kind of let you look here for yourself so you can pause and read some of the stuff that I got got the Empire of the Black Sun and the Empire of the City. I'm going to show you how that connects up probably tomorrow, but they're the, the same thing, the manifestation of the same philosophy. And uh, these symbols here, of course, which is what is in the center here. Now this is making that eye. Okay, we've got the eyeball structure, we've got the iris, and then we've got the pupil course the pupils of darkness and that's going to connect up to everything that we looked at with the serpent egg series this is connecting up with everything we understand with uh with the web this is understanding everything with this valley of the shadow of death why everything is you know covered in this darkness why everything is so treacherous all of the connections that we're making even on back down to the lightning bolt you know all that glitter is not gold so once they create this level of darkness over the world it's easy to catch people's attention with this little bits of glitter here, this little bits of materialism, because everything else is darkened down. And then they control the fireworks, so to say, the materialism. And that's exactly what these lightning bolts begin to represent. But it's much bigger than this. All of these symbols become relevant. Now you can see where the swastika comes from if you follow just these central dividing bars here. And then a perfect swastika shows up. Of course, there's a segment of it there. And it's showing you it's the same geometry. And, of course, the swastika is the, the twisted cross. But the swastika also means uh, good fortune if you follow it in Eastern philosophy. And, of course, that's how they've adopted it. It represents this good fortune. What In the macro form of this good fortune, it's just not good fortune for the Nazi party and their undertaking. It's good fortune... For this fallen prince, of course, as he seeks to cover this O-covering cherub, as he seeks to cover northeast, south, and west, this world with this crooked path. Of course, that's what the Twisted Cross is all about. So, we see everything's here. We're going to find the 33, the lightning bolts, which is the crooked path, the web structure, the Orion is made, the whole nine that connects it back to the spider. And this other very popular Vril symbol, which is basically just the lightning bolt, which is, you know, Lucifer, son of the morning. There's the sun there. And then, of course, you know, beholding Lucifer fall like lightning. You know, it's no secret what they're trying to display. And we're going to see further. And all of this is going to relate back to everything that we've already looked at. You know, everything that we have already shown in such a big way you know this right here once again is a spider's web this right here once again is the representation of the eye it's a, once again a representation of perceptual dimensionality it's what the observer sees the four avenues of dimensional perception four avenues of dimensional knowledge as it's divided into two dimensional paths one of a spiritual view one of a material view same thing and of course, same thing that we're looking at here. Same thing I just described. And if you'll remember, it's all going to relate back to the very same thing that we started talking about on this other series. I'll be back.